I get into my topic, let's talk a bit about Jurassic World, the latest movie. It featured a dinosaur that had been genetically modified to have the features of a velociraptor and a T-Rex, a deadly combination. This horrifying abomination and many other monsters like it were being sold off or being auctioned by countries as weapons of war. This got me thinking, is this what genetic editing is capable of? And if so, who's going to stop it? CRISPR is a new stalwart term in biotechnology. It stands for clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. Among the other more specialized, more complicated types of gene editing nucleases, this is a shining beacon of modularity as it applies to all circumstances, even the most controversial of them all, editing the human embryo itself. What's important for us to remember is that this is one of those unique sciences that is moving faster than the regulations governing it. But before we get into the implications of that, let's have some basics on DNA and CRISPR itself. Our DNA is structured somewhat like a ladder that has been slightly twisted. The, the so-called rungs of this ladder are formed by four unique bases, and the sequence of these bases are what decide our every physical trait and chemical composition. It's a blueprint for us, and it's unique to everyone. Now, just like one must first deconstruct to create something new, so must one first damage the DNA to actually edit it. To achieve this, there are three main steps. Step one, a guide RNA is created using the undesirable strand as an example. This is basically a chemical snapshot for what we want to take out. Step two, this guide RNA is made into a complex with a Cas9 protein which behaves like a molecular scissor. This complex is then applied to the target cells. Step three, this guide RNA then has to look for a matching part in the DNA strand, which it then latches onto. This triggers the Cas9 protein to cut, leaving us with a strand of DNA with a missing portion. So basically, CRISPR is kind of like a guided missile attacking the DNA specifically where we want it to. However, the magic happens when the repair mechanism kicks in. The first pathway is quite random, as it involves the two ends of DNA being shoved back together quite randomly, and it's quite inefficient. inefficient. This is not the one that we want. The second pathway is the one that scientists want to activate. In this, we trick the, the DNA by introducing a piece of, a strand of DNA that is different in the middle, but has homology on both ends. Homology meaning the same basis on both ends. So essentially, it would be like introducing a puzzle piece that has the correct shapes and ridges, but doesn't actually create the whole picture in the puzzle. CRISPR is easy to produce and cheap to buy. Now, why is that? Because the guide RNA is the only part that changes with every procedure. The Cas9 protein stays the same. This apparent ease opens up many new possibilities for people. Older mothers who worry that their child will be plagued by genetic diseases can now have a chance at motherhood. Parents who worry that parents who carry recessive, gene, recessive genes of de deadly genetic disorders can also have a chance of, at parenthood. Heck, even a bald man can snap out the gene responsible for his barren head to ensure that his son can have a lush crop of hair. But we must remember in the future. You see, the wrong story is portrayed in the media. There are legends of a molecular scissor being brandished by scientists to destroy all genetic diseases. But that's not true, at least not yet. And here's why. Firstly, we don't know enough yet. CRISPR is relatively new technology. Think of it like the first iPhone that came out in 2007. It looks like a brick compared to the newer models, doesn't it? And that horrible camera, don't get me started. The story of CRISPR that is portrayed in media these days would be like fantasizing about and normalizing the iPhone XR back in 2007, a sensationalized myth that has a long way to go before it can be real. Of course, mobile phones and editing the human genome itself are two very different things with two very different implications. One of them is life altering, and I'm sure you know which one that is. So to, dis to discuss these implications, let's see the story of Hei Jiankui. In November 2018, two twin girls, Lulu and Nana, were born. As a result of IVF and CRISPR, they were born genetically immune to HIV. The mastermind behind it all is Hei Jiankui. 
He disabled the CCR5 gene that allows HIV to enter human cells. That sounds great, doesn't it? The girls are born immune to HIV, and their successors will be due because these gene edits will get passed on. But you see, the issue is that CCR5 is also thought to prevent West Nile virus, encephalitis, and various other infections. The girls might end up being vulnerable to them. Now, you might have noticed how I said thought to prevent and might end up. That's because there's still no confirmed hypothesis on this yet. The research is still limited on DNA and the human genome. Despite how far we have come, each gene cannot be pinpointed to its exact function. For example, the often quoted eye color gene is actually determined by eight different genes in your genome. The same way, ripping out the gene responsible for HIV can lead to any number of malfunctions or emissions in the body that these girls will, might, will have to endure now. In the unique case of genetics and genealogy, human trials are something that are essential to the progress of the technology. But at the same time, they end up being highly controversial and highly unethical. This brings me to my second point. Ethics, they play a huge role into why CRISPR and germline editing is not a reality yet. There is the matter of consent, of course. Lulu and Nana did not technically consent to their procedure. Since they were embryos, there was no way they could do so. And while, yes, they're immunized against AIDS, they still have to live with the consequences of that, the consequences of that, which could end up being various genetic mutations that we still don't even know about. But most importantly, where is the line? Who draws the line? And by the line, I mean the line between genuine gene therapy that has medicinal purposes and vain, unnecessary aesthetic treatments that could lead to potentially altering the human genome, all for the added allure of the minds of Einstein or the beauty of Monroe. Who will stop the rich and the affluent from brazenly crossing that line? And that brings me to my last point of sociopolitical access and how it will differ for each economic class. The rich and affluent will have easy access to the technology of CRISPR and, G and germline editing. It will be at their disposal. But those from impoverished backgrounds obviously won't. Not only will this increase the divide between the rich and the poor, but also give rise to a whole new species that is genetically superior due to being immune to any number of genetic diseases. Now, the good news is that, can is that CRISPR itself is still being used to many other important projects today. For example, it's being used to research new cancer treatments that don't involve chemotherapy or radiation. Scientists are editing human cells outside the body and editing, editing them such that they can fight off the cancer infection, putting them back into the body with the virus. Secondly, another one that I think is remarkable is attempting to turn pigs into organ donors. Scientists are editing cells of the human immune system such that they don't reject porcine donors when they're applied. Lastly, one that I think is highly relevant to this topic is learning just exactly what genes do. CRISPR is being used as a tool to take apart genes and learn about their inner workings, to be able to one day actually be able to pinpoint each gene to its exact function. And this is the story that, of CRISPR that I think should be portrayed in media. What's important for us right now is to not be swayed by the highly ambitious, highly optimistic facade of CRISPR that is painted in media today. The human genome will be edited at some point. That is inevitable. Us homo sapiens will be left in the dust, as we once did to our ancestors, the Homo erectus. A new species will arise that is stronger than us, more dominant. What we can do right now is welcome CRISPR and germline editing with knowledge and grace into the wider landscape of medicine and gene therapy for it to have a positive impact on us and future generations. Thank you.